For years I've been making videos about record low water levels. Well this time, I get to make a video about California water and it's not all bad news. Welcome to Time Bomb, let's get started. In recent years, the prospect of heavy rains might have sounded good to many people living in California, where drought and wildfires have been the main worries. After all, the past three water years have been the driest in California history. Well, that is not the case today. Today, the state of California is virtually free of drought. Last winter's storms, fueled by a stream of atmospheric rivers, relieved severe drought conditions across wide swaths of the state. Heavy winter rain, as well as record amounts of snow in the Sierra Nevada mountains, has refilled many of the state's reservoirs. Let's see how California's reservoir capacity compares to a year ago. Lake Shasta, California's largest reservoir, is currently 80% of capacity, compared to 35% a year ago. Most of California's other reservoirs are also seeing increases in capacity. Lake Oroville was 30% of capacity at this time last year, and now it's at 84%. The capacity of Folsom Lake was 47%, and now stands at 78%. The San Luis Reservoir has increased from 28% a year ago to 86% today, and Don Pedro has increased from 55% to 91%. As we can see, all of California's major reservoirs are storing much more water than at the same time last year. Let's see how the reservoirs compare to their historical averages. Lake Shasta is currently 127% of its historical average for this time of year. Oroville is at 138%, Folsom 135%, and the beautiful San Luis Reservoir stands at a whopping 218% of its historical average. But what about Trinity Lake? Trinity Lake is the third largest reservoir in California. It can hold over 2.4 million acre feet. So why is Trinity only at 55% of its capacity? especially since Lake Shasta, just 40 miles away, is brimming with water. Like Lakes Shasta and Oroville, Trinity is a large reservoir. However, its drainage basin is very small in comparison. While Shasta Dam collects water from a drainage basin of over 6,600 square miles, Trinity Dam's basin is only 2,900 square miles, so it takes a lot longer to fill Lake Trinity than it does California's other large reservoirs. On top of that, most of last winter's snow fell in Shasta and Siskiyou counties, bypassing the Trinity drainage basin. Despite all of this, Trinity Lake is slowly filling. Last year, Trinity Lake was just 25% of its total capacity. Today, the capacity sits at 55%. That's a great improvement. As we have seen, California's reservoirs are currently in good condition. But what about the drought situation? Last year at this time, nearly all of California was either in severe, extreme, or exceptional drought, according to the U.S. Drought Monitor. As of August 15th, only a small fraction of the state was still in a moderate drought. One of the few areas that remained in drought, the southeastern corner of the state, just saw a tremendous amount of rain from Hillary. As of today, there's no significant drought in California. Man, I've been waiting a long time to say that. Now that we're on the subject, let's take a look at how Hurricane Hillary, a tropical storm by the time it reached California, impacted the drought situation. According to the August 15th Drought Monitor Report, 25% of California was in an abnormally dry or D4 drought condition, most of that in the San Bernardino, Riverside, and Imperial counties in the southeast corner of the state. The Drought Monitor report from August 22nd, one day after Hillary left the area, shows that D4 abnormally dry percentage has dropped to just 6. So Tropical Storm Hillary did help lift California further out of drought, but its impact is only temporary. California's massive water storage system is primarily designed to capture water from winter precipitation in the form of snowpack runoff. This is why most of California's largest reservoirs are located in the northern part of the state. California's water storage infrastructure isn't adequately equipped to harness and retain water from a very rare event such as Tropical Storm Hillary. The impact was strongly felt in the southern region of the state, which lacks the necessary framework to collect and preserve water originating from a storm of Hillary's magnitude. So after a winter of historic rains and the recent influx of water from Tropical Storm Hillary, California is out of drought and the reservoirs are filled to the brim. But what about long-term storage? 
Stored surface water, this is the water stored in our reservoirs, is mostly used in the initial drought years. Groundwater storage, on the other hand, plays a larger role in prolonged droughts. When water starts to become scarce, we use water from reservoirs first. As the drought continues, we start to rely on groundwater, or aquifer storage. According to the California Department of Water Resources, groundwater accounts for 40% of the state's total annual water supply in normal years, but that number increases to 60% in drought years. Today, thankfully, California is in a time of water abundance. But the concern is that California is letting much of that water wash into the sea instead of capturing it to recharge our long-parched groundwater aquifers. Groundwater basins are made up of layers of underground aquifers which store water between layers of rock, gravel, and sand. California's aquifers have the capacity to store more than 850 million acre feet. That's 17 times more water than all of the state's major reservoirs combined. Some surface water naturally percolates down and replenishes these aquifers, but it does so rather slowly. When people talk about recharging groundwater, they usually mean managed aquifer recharge, where humans intervene to accelerate the percolation process. This can involve injecting water back down into aquifers through wells, flooding agricultural fields, or building recharge ponds to hold and retain the water while it percolates to the aquifer. The California Department of Water Resources estimates that over 3.8 million acre-feet of water have been recharged so far this year. One recent example of groundwater recharging took place when California's Central Valley was under threat of flooding back in May. To reduce the threat of inundation, the DWR, in coordination with local water management districts, installed pumps and siphons to divert the water away from flooded areas. That water was then pumped to existing recharge facilities or to fallowed fields where the water would eventually drain into the aquifer. It is estimated that operating these pumps to deliver water away from the Central Valley redirected up to 55,000 acre feet of water to the aquifer. Groundwater recharging is a very interesting topic that I think deserves more attention. I'll create a video dedicated to this topic in the near future. But before I go, let's take a closer look at California's largest reservoirs, Lake Shasta and Lake Oroville, to see where we stand. Lake Shasta's water level is currently 1,033 feet above mean sea level. That's 79% of full pool capacity. Back on May 24th, the elevation rose to just over 1,064 feet, just four inches below the record high water level that was recorded back on May 31st of 2019. Lake Oroville's water level is currently 861 feet, or 85% of full pool capacity. Back on June 10th, the elevation rose to 899 feet. That's just three feet shy of the record high elevation that was set on February 11th, 2017. As you've seen, both Shasta and Oroville's water levels have declined a bit since topping off this summer. This is by design. The Department of Water Resources has enough water in the surface storage system that they can continue with routine outflows to help meet the increased summer demand while freeing up capacity for this winter's storms. The key is to not release too much water. We need that water for the upcoming drier months. Of course, I'll keep an eye on this situation and I'll keep you updated with another video next week. In the meantime, please check out some of my other videos and consider subscribing to my channel. I really value your support.